Focusing attention. In this part, I am going to cover two different ways to direct the attention of your students to different things in your recording. The first one I have already discussed in other part of these tutorials and it is by using the cursor. You have seen me do this throughout my recordings and basically what I do is I use the cursor to direct your attention to different things I am speaking about. At the beginning of my recordings, I didn't use to manage the cursor in any specific way. And after a lot of experiences, I came to realize that it's a very good tool to focus your students' attention. Signaling different things on the screen and leaving the cursor standing there without any movement did not come easy and basically came with practice. And once that I have done many recordings, I was able to clearly move the mouse to things that I wanted to point out throughout my recording. One of the things that I would not recommend for your cursor is to do very quick movements because they are very distracting for your students. For example, if I do this and then I mention that this and I come over here and since I know my parts of the screen really well, I can move the cursor quite quickly from one side to the other, but eventually this will become very distracting. So it is better to keep it still and to use it as you would probably use a laser in a presentation. Another resource that you have to focus the attention of your students on different things on your screen is by zooming in and out. And also you have seen me do this throughout my presentations. To show you how to zoom in and zoom out, I'm going to bring back my Camtasia software window with the previous tutorial for prompts and callouts. In the Camtasia window, you're going to find the zoom in and zoom out behaviors in the channel where your video recording is placed. You will find them in the form of these triangular shapes, which indicates the initial point of the zoom behavior and the final point of that zoom behavior. Even though probably you have been experiencing some of these tutorials and you already know how I use the zoom in and zoom out behavior, I'm gonna just take a moment to play it here so you can see how I apply it. I'm gonna place the head of the program over here and please pay attention to what I'm saying so you can understand how the zoom behavior is being done. Bring forward my Camtasia window and I am going to show you a prompt. Here it is. The prompt is a piece of textual information that you can provide in your screen at any given moment of your recording. Now, in this moment, I zoomed in into where the prompt is. And even though it would have been able to appear on the screen once that we have this at 100%, for example, if I want to see the actual recording size, I will go over here and then I will see that probably the prompt is somewhat visible in there. I am going to go back to 50% so I can have a good view of my screen and zooming in into the specific area where I have the prompt to show you what it is, it actually helps me focus your attention. Once that that has been done, Part of what I do is zoom out again so you can take a good look of the manipulations that I'm doing on this left side of the screen because they are important for what I am saying. I'm going to find another part where I have a good example of how I use zoom behaviors. In this part of the recording, I am showing different things and even though I'm not doing the zoom in and zoom out behavior very quickly one after the other, they do take a sequence and they do facilitate my instruction of what I'm showing. So at this moment, I am going to play why I decided to use a color at this point in time. At this moment, I focus a little bit more on the screen to show how it's going to play. Yeah. You can see that as I am moving this lever, the sound file is raising and you can so at this moment in time, I said the sound file is raising and I show how I was looking at the information in the window. And in order to show you exactly what I am saying with my call out, I zoom in and I also leave within my zoom in behavior, the position of the arrow. 
and that would facilitate you viewing not only the callout but what I'm referring to at the time of the recording that as I move this little lever up and down once that that has been done I here and do a quick fix zoom out so I can tell you about a different type of callout behavior which is the arrow and it's located over here in the timeline so these are two examples of the way that I use zoom behaviors now I'm gonna zoom out within this interface so you can see all of my timeline and you will see how many different zoom behaviors I applied to the previous tutorial. From my experience, students do put a little bit more attention to video recordings when they're zoom in and zoom out behaviors. So I do recommend using zoom ins and zoom outs with care and not doing it in an excessive way because it actually has a detrimental effect on the file size of your video. Very well, let's cover quickly how to create a zoom behavior and for that I am just selecting any moment in my timeline. There's no specific reason why I'm adding a zoom behavior at this moment in time. It's just to demonstrate you how the zoom behavior is applied to your video. The first thing that you need to do is to place the head of the program in the place where you want your zoom to finish not to start but to finish and once that you have done that come over here to this area where you can find the animations option remember that if this is not there you can bring it back out with this button once that we have that done I'm gonna click on the zoom in behavior over here and I'm gonna drag it into the timeline in order to get the specific zoom in properties at this point in time, you should double click on this little dot and that will bring the properties window. In this side, you're going to be able to determine what is the scale of your zoom in. Now, in this case, as you can see over here is 309 and that is very far in. I will not recommend going anything above maybe 200. And once that you have precise well the amount of zoom in behavior that you would like to have, then it is a moment of clicking and dragging the viewing area for you to position that video in a way that benefits your recording. Once that that has been done, you're going to realize that the zoom behavior has been placed and is taking place within your video. Underneath this one over here, but since both do not overlap, that doesn't become apparent. So that zoom behavior has been addressed and if I would like to add another zoom behavior that could be a zoom in or a zoom out I just drag one of these two options into the timeline. Now once that you drag any of these two options to the timeline you're going to be able to change the specific amount of zoom in or zoom out through this scale lever. So I'm going to grab another, for example, zoom out. I'm going to place it there. I'm going to double click on the red button. And now I know that this has been zoomed to 90% for it to fit well on the screen. So I'm going to leave it as that. I'm going to show you once more how these two zoom behaviors take place. This one over here. But since both do not overlap, that doesn't become apparent. However, it follows the same logic that as you and it works fairly well for what I am demonstrating. Now, one of the things that I would like to show you about these zoom behaviors is that once that you have created them, they don't have to be static in any place of the timeline. So you can move these further back. Both do not overlap. That doesn't become apparent or move it to another position in your video recording. Also, one of the things that you can do with your zoom behaviors is that you can grab any of the two edges and when you have this back and forth arrow below your cursor, you can click and drag the zoom behavior so it can be as long as you want it to be. And Camtasia will automatically do all the work so that is longer than before. So I'm gonna play it now, this one over here but since both do not overlap, that doesn't become apparent. However, it follows the same logic that as you put, 
and there it goes. Also, you can grab this other one and you can put it right in there. And therefore, you're going to have two very long zoom in and zoom out behaviors. This one over here, but since both do not overlap, that doesn't become apparent. However, it follows the same logic that as you put different callouts on top of the different track. Now, having explained how the zoom behaviors work, there's something to be said about how the compression works in Camtasia. Because the actual zoom behaviors that you have in your recording are going to have an actual impact in the file size of your video production. What I would recommend is not to alter at all the default setting for a zoom in or a zoom out behavior. And that makes it approximately one second long and that would be good enough to create a smooth transition to focus the attention of your students. So once that you are done with all your Zoom behaviors, remember to save your file in order not to lose your work. And finally, if you would like to get rid of one of these Zoom behaviors, it is as easy as selecting it and clicking on the delete key.